On the third day, Esther put on her special robes. Then she stood in the inside area of the king's palace, in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his throne in the hall, facing the place where people enter the throne room. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was very pleased. He held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. So Esther went into the room and went near the king. Then she touched the end of the king's gold scepter. Then the king asked, What is bothering you, Queen Esther? What do you want to ask me? I will give you anything you ask for, even half my kingdom. Esther said, I have prepared a party for you and Haman. Will you and Haman please come to the party today? Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, so that we may do what Esther asked. So the king and Haman went to the party Esther had prepared for them. While they were drinking wine, the king asked her again, Now Esther, what do you want to ask for? Ask for anything. I will give it to you. So what is it you want? I will give you anything you want, up to half my kingdom. Esther answered, This is what I want to ask for. If the king is pleased with me and thinks it good to give me what I ask for, let the king and Haman come tomorrow. I will prepare another party for them. Then I will tell what I really want. Haman left the king's palace that day, very happy and in a good mood. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate, he became very angry. Haman was very mad at him because Mordecai didn't show any respect when Haman walked by. Mordecai was not afraid of Haman, and this made Haman mad. But Haman controlled his anger and went home. Then Haman called together his friends and his wife, Zeresh. Haman started bragging about how rich he was. He was bragging to his friends about his many sons and about all the ways the king had honored him. And he was bragging about how the king had promoted him higher than all the other leaders. And that's not all, Haman added. I'm the only one Queen Esther invited to be with the king at the party she gave. And the queen also has invited me to be with the king again tomorrow. But all this means nothing to me. I cannot be happy as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Then Haman's wife Zeresh and all his friends had a suggestion. They said, tell someone to build a post to hang him on. Make it 75 feet tall. In the morning, ask the king to hang Mordecai on it. Then go to the party with the king and you can be happy. Haman liked this suggestion, so he ordered someone to build the hanging post. That same night, the king could not sleep, so he told a servant to bring the history book and read it to him. The book of history of the kings lists everything that happens during a king's rule. The servant read the book to the king. He read about the evil plan to kill King Xerxes. That was when Mordecai had learned about Big Thana and Teresh. These two men were the king's officers who guarded the doorway. They had planned to kill the king, but Mordecai learned about the plan and told someone about it. Then the king asked, What honor and good things have been given to Mordecai for this? The servants answered the king, Nothing has been done for Mordecai. Haman had just entered the outer area of the king's palace. He had come to ask the king to hang Mordecai on the hanging post. Haman had commanded to be built. The king said, who just came into the courtyard? The king's servant said, Haman is standing in the courtyard. So the king said, Bring him in. When Haman came in, the king asked him a question. He asked, Haman, what should be done for a man the king wants to honor? Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would want to honor more than me? I'm sure that the king is talking about honoring me. So Haman answered the king, do this for the man the king loves to honor. Have the servants bring a special robe the king himself has worn and a horse the king himself has ridden. Have the servants put the king's special mark on the horse's head. Then put one of the king's most important leaders in charge of the robe and the horse. And let the leader put the robe on the man the king wants to honor. Then let him lead him on the horse through the city streets. As he leads him, let him announce, This is done for the man the king wants to honor. Go quickly, the king commanded Haman. Get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew. 
He is sitting near the king's gate. Do everything that you suggested. So Haman got the robe and the horse. Then he put the robe on Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city streets. Haman announced ahead of Mordecai, This is done for the man the king wants to honor. After that, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. But Haman hurried home with his head covered because he was embarrassed and ashamed. Then Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His wife and the men who gave him advice said, If Mordecai is a Jew, you cannot win. You have already started to fall. Surely you will be ruined. While they were still talking to Haman, the king's eunuchs came to Haman's house. They made Haman hurry to the party that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went to eat with Queen Esther. Then as they were drinking wine on the second day of the party, the king again asked Esther a question. Queen Esther, what is it that you want to ask for? Ask anything and it will be given to you. What do you want? I will give you anything, even half my kingdom. Then Queen Esther answered, King, if you like me and it pleases you, please let me live. And I ask you to let my people live too. This is what I ask for. I ask this because my people and I have been sold to be destroyed, to be killed and wiped out completely. If we had just been sold as slaves, I would have kept quiet because that would not be enough of a problem to bother the king. Then King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, Who did this to you? Where is the man who dared to do such a thing to your people? Esther said, The man against us, our enemy, is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was filled with terror before the king and queen. The king was very angry. He got up, left his wine, and went out into the garden. But Haman stayed inside to beg Queen Esther to save his life. He begged for his life because he knew that the king had already decided to kill him. Just as the king was coming back in from the garden to the party room, he saw Haman falling on the couch where Esther was lying. The king said with anger in his voice, Will you attack the queen even while I am in the house? As soon as the king had said this, servants came in and killed Haman. One of the eunuchs who served the king was named Harbona. He said, A hanging post 75 feet tall has been built near Haman's house. Haman had it made so that he could hang Mordecai on it. Mordecai is the man who helped you when he told you about the evil plans to kill you. The king said, Hang Haman on that post. So they hanged Haman on the hanging post he had built for Mordecai. Then the king stopped being angry. That same day, King Xerxes gave Queen Esther everything that belonged to Haman, the enemy of the Jews. Esther told the king that Mordecai was her cousin. Then Mordecai came to see the king. The king had gotten his ring back from Haman. The king took the ring off his finger and gave it to Mordecai. Then Esther put Mordecai in charge of everything that belonged to Haman. Then Esther spoke to the king again. She fell at the king's feet and began crying. She begged the king to cancel the evil plan of Haman the Agagite. Haman had thought up the plan to hurt the Jews. Then the king held out the gold scepter to Esther. Esther got up and stood in front of the king. Then she said, King, if you like me and if it pleases you, please do this for me. Please do this if you think it is a good idea. If the king is happy with me, Please write a command that would stop the command Haman sent out. Haman the Agagite thought of a plan to destroy the Jews in all the king's provinces, and he sent out commands for this to happen. I am begging the king because I could not bear to see these terrible things happen to my people. I could not bear to see my family killed. King Xerxes answered Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Because Haman was against the Jews, I have given his property to Esther and my soldiers have hanged him on the hanging post. Now write another command by the authority of the king. Write it to help the Jews in a way that seems best to you. Then seal the order with the king's special ring. No official letter written by the authority of the king and sealed with the king's ring can be canceled. Very quickly, the king's secretaries were called. This was done on the 23rd day of the third month, the month of Sivan. They wrote out all of Mordecai's commands to the Jews and to the satraps, the governors, and officials of the 127 provinces. 
These provinces read from India to Ethiopia. The commands were written in the language of each province and translated into the language of each group of people. The commands were written to the Jews in their own language and alphabet. Mordecai wrote commands by the authority of King Xerxes. Then he sealed the letters with the king's ring and sent them by messengers on horses. The messengers rode fast horses, which were raised especially for the king. The king's commands in the letters said this, The Jews in every city have the right to gather together to protect themselves. They have the right to ruin, kill, and completely destroy any army from any group who might attack them and their women and children. And the Jews have the right to take and destroy the property of their enemies. The day set for the Jews to do this was the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar. They were permitted to do this in all King Xerxes provinces. A copy of the letter with the king's command was to be sent out. It became a law in every province. They announced it to all the people of every nation living in the kingdom. They did this so that the Jews would be ready for that special day. They would be allowed to pay their enemies back. The messengers hurried out riding on the king's horses. The king commanded them to hurry, and the command was also put in the capital city of Susa. Mordecai left the king. He was wearing special clothes from the king. His clothes were blue and white, and he had on a large gold crown. He also had a purple robe made of the best linen. There was a special celebration in Susa. The people were very happy. It was an especially happy day for the Jews a day of great joy and happiness. Wherever the king's command went in every province and every city, there was joy and gladness among the Jews. They were having parties and celebrating. Many of the common people from other groups became Jews. They did this because they were very afraid of the Jews. On the 13th day of the 12th month, Adar, the people were supposed to obey the king's command. This was the day the enemies of the Jews hoped to defeat them. But now things had changed. The Jews were stronger than their enemies who hated them. The Jews met together in their cities, in all the provinces of King Xerxes, so that they would be strong enough to attack the people who wanted to destroy them. No one was strong enough to stand against them. They were afraid of the Jews. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and the king's administrators helped the Jews. All the leaders helped them because they were afraid of Mordecai. Mordecai had become a very important man in the king's palace. Everyone in the provinces knew his name and knew how important he was. And Mordecai became more and more powerful. The Jews defeated all their enemies. They used swords to kill and destroy them. They did what they wanted to the people who hated them. They killed and destroyed 500 men in the capital city of Susa. They also killed these men, Parshandatha, Dalphon, Aspatha, Paratha, Adalia, Eridatha, Parmashta, Arasai, Aradai, and Vaisatha. These men were the ten sons of Haman. Haman, son of Hamadatha, was the enemy of the Jews. The Jews killed all the men, but they didn't take anything that belonged to them. That day, the king heard how many men had been killed in the capital city of Susa. So the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed 500 men in Susa, including Haman's ten sons. Now, what do you want done in the other provinces of the king? Tell me, and I will have it done. Ask, and I will do it. Esther said, If it pleases the king, please let the Jews in Susa do the same thing again tomorrow. Also, hang the bodies of Haman's ten sons on post. So the king gave the command that it should be done. So the law was given in Susa, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. The Jews in Susa met together on the 14th day of the month of Adar. They killed 300 men in Susa, but they didn't take the things that belonged to them. At the same time, the Jews living in the other provinces also met together. They met together so that they would be strong enough to protect themselves. And so they got rid of their enemies. They killed 75,000 of their enemies, but the Jews didn't take anything that belonged to them. This happened on the 13th day of the month Adar. On the 14th day, the Jews rested and made that day a happy day of feasting. 
The Jews in Susa had met together on the 13th and 14th days of the month of Adar, and then on the 15th day they rested. So they made the 15th day a happy day of feasting. So those who live in the country and small villages celebrate Purim on the 14th day of Adar. They keep the 14th day as a happy day of feasting. On this day, they have parties and give presents to each other. Mordecai wrote everything down that had happened, and then he sent letters to all the Jews in all the King Xerxes provinces. He sent letters far and near. He did this to tell the Jews to celebrate Purim every year on the 14th and 15th days of the month Adar. They were to celebrate those days because on those days the Jews got rid of their enemies. And they were also to celebrate that month as the month when their sadness was turned into joy. It was a month when their crying was changed into a day of celebration. Mordecai wrote letters to all the Jews and told them to celebrate those days as a happy day of feasting. They should have parties, give gifts to each other, and give presents to the poor. So the Jews agreed to do what Mordecai had written to them, and they agreed to continue the celebration they had begun. Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, was the enemy of all the Jews. He had made an evil plan against the Jews to destroy them, and Haman had thrown the lot to choose a day to ruin and to destroy the Jews. At that time, the lot was called pure. Haman did this, but Esther went to talk to the king, so he sent out new commands. These commands not only ruined Haman's plans, but these commands caused those bad things to happen to Haman and his family. So Haman and his sons were hanged on post. At this time, lots were called Purim. So this festival is called Purim. Mordecai wrote a letter and told the Jews to celebrate this festival. And so the Jews started the custom of celebrating these two days every year. They do this to help them remember what they had seen happen to them. The Jews and all the people who join them celebrate these two days every year at the right time in just the right way. Every generation and every family remembers these two days. They celebrate this festival in each and every province and in each and every town. And the Jews will never stop celebrating the days of Purim. Their descendants will always remember this festival. So Queen Esther, daughter of Abihel, along with Mordecai the Jew, wrote an official letter about Purim. They wrote with full authority of the king to prove that the second letter was true. So Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews in the 127 provinces of King Xerxes' kingdom. He told the people that the festival should bring peace and make people trust each other. He wrote these letters to tell the people to start celebrating Purim, and he told them when to celebrate this new festival. Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had sent out the command for the Jews to establish this two-day festival for themselves and their descendants. They will remember this festival just as they remember the other festivals when they fast and cry about the bad things that had happened. Esther's letter made the rules for Purim official, and these things were written down in a book. King Xerxes made people pay taxes. All the people in the kingdom, even the faraway cities on the sea coast, had to pay taxes. And all the great things Xerxes did are written in the book of history of the kings of Media and Persia. Also written in those history books are all the things Mordecai did. The king made Mordecai a great man. Mordecai the Jew was second in importance to King Xerxes. He was the most important man among the Jews. His fellow Jews respected him very much because he worked hard for the good of his people and brought peace to all the Jews.